All right, guys, we're back in my garage for another video. And today we're going to be talking about the latest news from Pure Drivetrain Solutions. They had a major reveal at PRI last year. And I just kind of wanted to use this video to talk about this new transmission that they're going to be releasing. I know this video is a little bit late because PRI was a little over a month ago. But I did just want to make sure that I had all of my facts and everything put together as much as possible for this video. And I know a lot of you guys have just been asking for kind of my thoughts on this. So I hope this is another case of better late than never. You know, I'll share the information that I do have with you guys. And hopefully this answers any questions that you might have. Now, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create videos to help keep you guys updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So yeah, there was a major reveal at PRI by Pure Drive Chain Solutions. They kind of posted this teaser a week before so that everybody kind of knew something was going to be coming. And then at the show, they revealed this new Siege transmission. And they shared a lot of data across their social media channels, but they do have a main page where they list out all of the details I'll have that link down in the description if you guys want to read up a little bit more for yourselves. But there is a lot to unpack here. So what Pure has done is they've basically designed a transmission from the ground up that is going to be able to support any driving style you want, hopefully any amount of power that you want to throw at it, and just give you the convenience of adjusting it to do whatever you want when you want it to do it. Now they did say that it is pronounced SIEGE, but SIEGE is an acronym. It stands for Super Intelligent Adaptive Gearbox. And as the name suggests, it can be adapted to any kind of driving style or purpose that you want for a specific setup. Now, at the core, this is an 8-speed automatic transmission. I don't think that it's based on the ZF Trans. It looks like they've designed their own case, and I'm sure the internals and everything are going to be built to their own spec. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it's based off of a ZF Trans or a modified Trans. They're basically building their own transmission that does exactly what they want. And the good news is that means that you have a lot of extra adjustability available to you as the end user. So they're showing that it can run with an H pattern shifter, just like a regular six speed manual transmission. But you can also control it with a sequential style shifter. So you can have, you know, basically the single handle where you push forward or back to go up or down gears. And when you're driving around town, that's something that can drive exactly how you want it to. They even offered it with a paddle shifting option. So you can put shifters or buttons on your steering wheel that allow you to shift up and down depending on your use. So there are a couple questions that come with this idea, right? The first question is, how is this even possible? How can you go from a manual transmission to an automatic? And like I said, at the basis, this is an 8-speed automatic transmission and everything is controlled electronically. They did say that it does have one external clutch, it has seven internal clutches for the different gear selections, and it also has a torque converter for everything to work together. So for example, you know, if you're using it in manual mode with the H pattern transmission, the clutch will allow you to get going from a stop, but that clutch is a clutch by wire setup. So the same way we have throttle by wire, or now some cars are brake by wire, in this case, the clutch pedal is electronically controlled and it'll use a sensor that basically sends that data to the transmission and then it controls the release of the clutch based on what your foot is doing on the clutch pedal. So it's maybe not the exact thought that you would have when it says it has a manual transmission option. It's not a hydraulically controlled clutch, but it still offers the same feedback, the same use, you know, the functionality and everything is the same. They said you can even clutch kick it. So if you're going around a corner and want to kind of make it drift a little bit, you have the option to do that and it'll respond exactly like a regular, you know, conventional hydraulic manual clutch would work. And I think the key here is that it has a lot of adjustability because of the GCM. Now GCM stands for gearbox control module. And what this does is it basically does all of the mapping for how the transmission functions. And as the end user, you have the ability to adjust everything. So again, looking at the H pattern option, they said that you can adjust how long the throws are. You can adjust how notchy the shifts are. You can adjust how stiff the clutch pedal is. Basically, everything can be controlled and modified in the transmission control module just using different maps. So just like we have DME map switching, you know, maps one through four, 
and you're flipping through them, you'll be able to flip through different maps on the transmission and it can control things like the harshness of your shifts, the speed of your shifts. It can even control which gears you're using. So with the H pattern transmission, you're going to pick six out of the eight gears that you want to use. You can use all of the low gears if you want to have like really short gearing, or you can add a couple of the overdrive gears to have some good driving manners when you're cruising on the highway. Or if you're in automatic mode, you can use all eight of the gears. So hopefully you guys are kind of seeing the picture here. The opportunities are almost endless. You can pick which gears you want, how many of the gears you want to use, how the gears actually respond when you're driving, if you want more comfort shifts or performance-related shifts. All of that is set by you as the end user. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can adjust this. There is, of course, the more conventional method of just plugging in a laptop that will allow you to communicate with the control module, change different things, and flip between maps. They also are going to be offering a Bluetooth app. So through your phone, you can switch between the different maps and probably change a couple different settings. Or they actually have a switch, and they've shown a couple pictures of like this little remote that looks like it allows you to switch between maps. It also has options for park, reverse, drive. So a lot of different ways that you can change different things in how you're driving your car based on whatever's the most convenient for you. You know, if you want it on your phone or you want this extra little remote that you can use, whatever is your preference, that'll be available to you. Now, for everybody that's not familiar, Koenigsegg released the CC850 last year, and it has very similar marketing behind how the transmission works because it also has both manual and automatic options in the same gearbox. Now, there are a couple different reasons why this is different. For one, the Koenigsegg allows you to shift between the H-pattern gearbox and the more sequential style gearbox. So if you move it to the left, you have six different gears that you can choose from, and you can move it in an H pattern to drive the car. And if you move it to the right, then it goes into automatic mode, and you have reverse up and drive down. But you can also use it to basically bump gears as you're shifting, like as if it was kind of a sequential. On the pure drivetrain solutions, siege transmission, you're not going to have that option to flip between the H pattern and the sequential, at least from what I can tell. You can see they actually show you what the shifters look like, the H pattern, for example, has, you know, the shift knob in the middle. It has the base that kind of bolts up to the transmission tunnel. And then you also have the wire kind of coming out to the back. I'm assuming that goes to the GCM and that sends the data for, you know, what gear you're picking to the transmission to actually change gears. Then they also have the sequential shifter option that looks a little bit different. It has a taller shifter. It only goes forward and back but it still kind of has a similar looking base and the plug that goes to the GCM. Now I am assuming that this is a very modular style setup. So you can probably literally unbolt it and flip between the two different options and then just plug it back in. Not a hundred percent sure, but it does appear that they're trying to support that capability based on the design, but it doesn't appear to be something where you can shift from the H pattern style shifting to the sequential style shifting while you're just driving around town. It'll probably require a little more work, you know, park it and kind of flip all the hardware and switch your tune in order to change between those setups. Now, on the other hand, the Klonaseg is almost like an off the shelf map, right? So they've already picked which six gears you're going to use for the H pattern shifter and everything is kind of locked into a specific driving style. With the Siege transmission, you're going to be able to set those different maps depending on how you're driving. So you can kind of have like a comfort mode and a sport mode. You can have one set for drag racing, one for road racing and roll racing. You can have one for regular cruising. And so all of that is extremely adjustable and customizable by you. I'm sure there are several tuners out there that can help you set up different maps depending on your driving style and how you're going to use your car. So yeah, it's just a lot more adjustable for you with the different maps that you can select compared to the Koenigsegg where it's kind of like one setup and you just switch between manual and automatic. Now let's talk about some of the other details. So they did share that this transmission is going to be extremely strong. It's rated for up to 2000 foot pounds currently. So more than probably what most of us want to throw at it. It also can rev to over 10,000 RPM. So of course, if you have an engine that can rev that high, you want a transmission that can match it. And this one should match pretty much what most people will be throwing at it. It's also set up for multiple styles of racing. So some people are asking, you know, can this 
lock up the torque converter for drag racing. It'll have that capability. Will it be strong enough to support, you know, off-road racing? It'll have that capability as well. It's also available in rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. So it'll have a transfer case option that can be set based on gearing that you desire. And they'll set that up for you so you can put it in your all-wheel drive car as well. It also has CAN integration as well as data logging capability. So again, for everybody that wants a custom tune, you'll be able to dial that in exactly how you want it. It also has a couple additional input and output capabilities. So if you want to wire it up to a specific setup, send that data out somewhere or have, you know, the transmission shifting, also transmit data to a different display or whatever, you know, you'll have the capability to kind of add auxiliary inputs and outputs for the transmission data. Now, they did mention that they plan on providing this as a package for certain setups. So certain engines and platforms should have adapters and flywheels set up for it when they actually put it out on sale. But they will also kind of sell it almost like a core where you can build your own adapters and set up all the other auxiliary functions and stuff exactly how you want it. So you can buy just the transmission or you can buy a kit designed to fit your setup. They also mentioned that it's estimated to be under 200 pounds with the converter. So the whole transmission kit should be under 200 pounds. We'll know for sure once they actually finalize the design and everything. And also they're planning on getting it SFI certified. So depending on the racing style that you're using or the class that you're running in, they are going to be presenting this to get a uh, certification for safety. So you'll make sure that it meets all of the requirements for your build. Now, the last thing that everybody is wondering is probably the price. I can tell you right now that this is going to be extremely expensive. I've seen a couple people like kind of misunderstand how this is going to work. You know, they see like the pure stage one and pure stage two available. So they assume this is just going to be like the next stage and it'll be a couple thousand dollars more. That's definitely not the case, you know, especially for my super guys out there that are looking at this as a potential upgrade. I would assume that this is probably going to cost at least half the value of your car, if not more. So it's going to be extremely expensive. But on the other hand, I will say that most people really don't need this. This is kind of something that I'm thinking in my mind where you have like a resto mod that's like a no budget build. You know, you're throwing everything at it. You're probably buying like a 2000 horsepower Nelson racing engine. And you also want to pair it with a really highly advanced transmission option that lets you have your cake and eat it too. So this is the kind of setup for people like that. I think in most other cases, if you just have a transmission that's slipping on your 700 horsepower B58 or S58, then you can just go with a regular pure transmission and that'll serve your needs for all intents and purposes. But for somebody that really wants kind of the end all be all transmission solution, especially as we get in the future and we're gonna start seeing more crazy builds people that are trying to get as much as they can out of the last of the internal combustion engines and things like that. This is something that's really going to support that next level build, something that's really high budget, you know, dual purpose, drive it on the street and also pull shit really hard at the track. This will be able to do everything you would want it to do and more, you know, have plenty of capability on the table beyond probably what most of us really need. So yeah, hopefully this answers all the questions that you guys have about the Siege transmission. Again, a huge shout out to Pure Drivetrain Solutions for coming up with this idea. I can't wait to see it actually go out in the field and hopefully get in some really cool cars. I'm sure there will be maybe some build series or something in the future where we can see how these things install and then see people driving them around and putting them to work. So I can't wait to see that happen. Right now we're still kind of waiting for them. They said that they're working on inventory and production, kind of ramping that up so that it can officially go on sale. So hopefully we'll see this coming out in the spring. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.